Good morning and welcome to our Tuesday morning review uh, from this past Sunday, which was, by the way, if you're familiar with the church calendar year, it was the uh, day of the triumphal entry. That's uh, right. Palm Sunday. And so we were, uh, we were on the road out west, traveling from Edmonton to Sylvan Lake, listening to you, Mark, in the SUV. Uh, the audio and the video doesn't quite line up when you're right. putting it through the truck's uh, audio system. So you looked a little bit different when you were talking, yeah. but what an excellent message. And we're here today to talk about that. Mark was talking about how you, uh, you, can't, you couldn't stop Jesus, so how can you become unstoppable as well? And Mark, you had three excellent statements regarding our purpose and how to become an unstoppable person. Yeah. And, uh, and so if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask you to just kind of elaborate okay. on that first one. You said the first thing was that uh, we need to get down was that when the Father tells us to go, you just obey. That's you just right. obey. Mark, can you elaborate on that? Well, I think the simplicity of it, as Christians, we often try to make our faith complex, or we have all these religious rules, and am I doing it right? But when it comes down to it, when God tells you to do something, do it. Uh, in our culture, we have to understand everything before we do it, but God uh, often isn't looking for understanding. Uh -huh. he, he is looking for obedience. Wow. And so uh, yes. the Bible is clear, obedience is better than sacrifice. If God calls you to do something, and as long as it's in line with the scriptures, and check with your wife first, for those who are married, uh, and uh, then go do it, and do it uh, in faith. So that was the, the point one. So you're saying God and then your wife, that's what I got out of that, is yeah. that right? Yeah, God, your wife kind of works with the Holy Spirit as a tandem, so check in with her there you before go. you make the decision. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, the second way you said to be unstoppable with your purpose is to understand that when you arrive at your destination, that you need to arrive with humility. I thought that was an amazing point. Yeah. Can you explain uh, why humility is so important for us in the journey of fulfilling our purpose with God? Well, the Bible's clear that uh, pride is a stumbling block to any person. And so Jesus modeled that. He was a king and a savior, but notice Jesus came in on a donkey, a colt. He didn't come in on the horse with the big sword on the side, killing everybody and taking over the Romans. He was trying to show us there's a higher way and humility, and humility when you break it down to, uh, is very simple. You just have to ask one question. To arrive with humility, you have to ask people, how can I help you, or how can I make your life better? So when you go to work this week, you can go to your boss and say, how can I make this company better? You can ask your spouse, what could I do in our marriage mm -hmm. to make it a little bit better? Mm -hmm. You can ask your kids, how could dad be a little bit better dad? What do you think? And then wait for a response, and that provides room uh, for growth by asking that question. Wow. Mark, you told an excellent story about that pastor on the East Coast, and I'm not going to get you to repeat it because you mm -hmm. need to watch the service and, and hear it if you didn't hear it before. But it illustrated perfectly what it is to come in and ask, how can I help? That's right. And so, yeah, you need to watch that. But let me move from that and get to the final point, okay. Mark. Uh, you had said that, uh, you know, we prevail in our purpose with the Lord. We prevail yeah. through patience. Yes. Uh, why is patience such an important element for us in our journey with Christ? Well, Jesus said, you will possess your soul through patience or with patience. And that jumped out at to me off the, off the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And that's because what I learned about when I studied patience in the, the Hebrew word for patience means to be the same person all the time. It means to mm -hmm. be consistent in your moral and character. It means to trust God when it's good, trust God when it's bad. Wow. And so what jumped off at that is we need to stop waiting on our circumstances and start waiting on God. When we mm -hmm. wait on his character, uh, we talked about how the enemy has an expiration date. At the end of the Bible, the, uh, the Satan loses and the Christians win. So we have to be patient enough to wait for our victory. Mm -hmm. We were in the staff meeting earlier. We talked about how, Mark, you said uh, Rick Warren said, uh, stop looking for a sign and go, go looking for a verse. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's what you're talking about. That's what that's patience right. is, right? It's yeah. waiting on the Lord, yeah. getting a word, a now word from the that's Lord, right. rather than trying to solve it yourself. That's fantastic. A little bit bonus thing here, Mark. You had made a, a quote. I want to just make sure I get it out here. You said it's easier to go through hell when you know what's on the other side. I love that. Kind of fired me up because I was preaching a little shortly after I heard your sermon. So can you just explain that quote as we're ending up yeah. today, well, what that means? When we think of Jesus going into Jerusalem, he knew he had a tough week ahead. In fact, we know that he was going to end that week with crucifixion. And the only way Jesus could get a hold of his purpose and fulfill what his dad told him to do was he knew on the other side of that cross, there's heaven. 
He said, for the joy set before him. Mm -hmm. So we have to know through the promises of God that even our, our purpose can be very difficult. It can be very, very hard on us. We have to know that God is still good. He loves us and that on the other side is the kingdom of heaven. And so we, we have to have that, that focus. And one of those points that, that jumped out on Sunday was I challenged all the younger men in our church that in, instead of trying to solve it ourselves and be our own heroes, young men, we need to take the time to wait on older men. Older men have wisdom, they mm -hmm. have counsel, mm -hmm. uh, they have insight. And I don't know, Kevin, you think maybe some of our older men have already made the mistakes? <laughs> Just a few. Yeah. So we, we challenge you younger men to find older men who've already been there, knock on their door, call or text them, take them to lunch or coffee or to breakfast and ask them what they've learned through life. Ask them what they've learned from their mistakes. This will help your purpose. This will refine our purposes, mm -hmm. uh, learning from others. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Yep. Uh, we had a great time listening to you on the road, and uh, we are so glad that you joined on Sunday here in, per in person, I should say, and uh, or you were watching online. We want to invite you this Friday, for yes. Good Friday, to see the culmination That's of right. uh, the Holy Week as Jesus, we tell the story of Jesus going to the cross, That's right. and we talk about what Jesus died for. Yeah. And then we're going to ha celebrate again with a baptismal on Easter Sunday. So join us in person. But if you can't, meet us back here next Tuesday. We'd love to see you. God bless you.